in there. Whatever one. Okay. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Not that anybody's watching this because I didn't get the link out of there. <laughs> you know, some people are just randomly searching PGM. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, episode 100. Uh, is like our last one that was on the. Uh, yeah, I realize those were way behind. Uh, I'm working on remembering to upload them to the proper. Because, like, these, like, when I do it, it goes to my channel. When Ryan does it, it goes to his channel. Blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't. I don't think there is one for Adam in the Dropbox, but I don't have Photoshop on this computer. There's not an Adam one, really. It might be an old one, and it took me forever to figure out what you meant about small bananas. Because that one time I came to D and D with small bananas. Why is there not an Adam one? Fuck. Because I suck. Oh god damn it. <laughs> Is it on your computer anywhere? Uh, maybe. Give me a second. At Adam.png would be the file. Okay, the, I, the one from before, it's the 13th Doctor. Okay. <laughs> well, that's gonna have to, have to be good enough tonight till I get this fucking font figured out. Did you, did you lose the font? No, it just doesn't work in my computer. It used to, and then somebody, you know, like this file got saved, and oh, I see. So now it doesn't agree anymore. Mute. What was that all about? The noise. Yeah. What the hell, man? That, that was the iPhone noise. <laughs> Or iPad noise. You mentioned me in a tweet, so... Oh, wow. Yeah, that's pretty reactive. I muted it, though. All right, that's good. There's a button for that. <coughs> All right, well, uh, we know the drill. Let's get rolling. Cool. Get the show on the road. Oh, I need to uh, probably start recording then. Yeah, that would know. Yeah, be That'd be cool. <laughs> if you don't mind. All right. All so right. Something to work with later. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Everybody rolling? I'm rolling. Bring it. Dan? Yep. Sorry. I'm no, going. That's all right. Yeah. That was a question for everyone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's count it in. And cool. in five, five four, four, three, three two, two, one. one. The whole operating my mouth in my hand thing is, is a foreign concept to me. <laughs> Sorry about that. You'll get there someday. Yeah. And you used to stopping at two and one. Yeah. You do violently. <laughs> Wayne's world. Yep. Yep. Well, hello and welcome to the machine. This is show number 105 for Friday, August 30th, 2013. I am your host, Kevin Alexander. I'm joined today by Adam Dixon and Daniel Lloyd, and together we combine to form the Perpetual Geek Machine. How are you gentlemen doing tonight? Great. Doing well. Good. It's good to hear. Good to hear. I uh, I recently uh, was told by somebody who tried to listen to our show for the first time, somebody that I know that wouldn't normally listen to this, uh, that he got to the part where I put on my radio voice and oh. uh, he shut it off. <laughs> well, that's right at the beginning when you do yeah, the so intro. Yeah, immediately. Yeah. yeah, he didn't get he didn't get too far into it. Oh, that's all right. I mean, you know, it, it's not like we lost a regular listener. He just gave it a shot and he found it too disturbing for uh, to hear me like that. No, I haven't listened to the episodes where you don't host, like those couple, those handful that you're not around for. Yeah, really, I should do that. I don't know. Um. Uh, right off the bat, uh, you know, Dan, I'm I'm sorry you're not you're feeling a little under the weather tonight. So uh, if folks could uh, just please excuse if he happens to need to sniffle or something along those lines, yeah. he's going to try and be a good boy and not uh, not do it directly into the microphone. But you know, oh well. I will like always breathe directly into the mic at all times. <sighs> um, 
Yeah, uh, Adam, you got your uh, you got your four roses ready to go. Uh, yes, yes, I do. Product placement. Go. Look, hold on, I'll, I'll put that right there. Oh, there it is. Nice. Yeah. And uh, and, and bourbon out there. Dan, where's Reagan? Uh, Reagan's at home. I'm at work. Oh, you're still at work. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So you work with that kind of cool moved, wall yeah. art behind you? Yeah. My my job is crazy. Uh, <laughs> I moved to a, a smaller like conference room though, so it don't sound like I'm in a big cave like okay. last time I recorded here. I think right. it'll be a little better. Uh, that's but, cool. Yeah. I would never uh, I would never ever hang around work to uh, do this. Well, we have like, <laughs> games and a pinball machine, and so like killing time isn't bad. Yeah. That's you work at an arcade? Uh, no, surprisingly. <laughs> <laughs> I work for a startup, so it has all that. Uh. Uh, stereotypical stuff along with it. Yeah, the yeah. money's just flowing like it's. Yeah. You know, they they have a faucet on the uh, on the wall that money just pours out of. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, all right, so we got a uh, we got a, a show tonight. Uh, we're going to be all over the place with what you've been doing, like uh, like usual. We got a little bit of everything going on, but that that should be fun. And tonight's five hit combo is the top five would be titles for my autobiography, and that's going to be uh, Dan and Adam facing off while I lay my judgment upon them. And we got some uh, super special break music for you as well, but I don't want to spoil the fun. But uh, right off the bat, um, Adam, uh, why don't you uh, tell me a little bit about what you've been doing, and uh, I want to hear about the uh, your activities on Sunday at the Sunday. local game shop. Sunday, Dan and I went down to our friendly local game shop and uh, All Things Fun in Berlin, New Jersey, yep. uh, and we attended their used game auction about twice a year now. They've been uh, doing a used game auction where they invite patrons to come back into their store with games that they realize that they're just not going to play anymore, fell out of favor with their game group for one reason or another, or maybe they just didn't like. And the store uh, goes, takes the box, ensures that all the pieces are there, ensures that everything is in a playable condition. Yeah, because you have Uh, to hand it in, like, weeks ahead of time. Yeah, yeah, like, they they opened this one up for the, the 5th of August and they just had it this past weekend. So, like, for three weeks, they collected games, verified all of them. They get back to you uh, saying, that, yeah, your game was acceptable. Uh, and then they uh, hold an auction. And this year they had, uh, quick flipping through the program, uh, they had 139 different lots Holy of, shit. of games. Whoa. Most of them were singleton games, but some of them were different, like, groups of Common games where someone like wanted to get rid of the uh, three or four or five uh, like smaller card games, and they just wow. pack them all together as a lot. I went to one of these. Uh, I guess it was a, over a year ago at this point, um, and there was not nearly that many lots, but it was still pretty popular, and it took quite a while. Yeah, well, <laughs> to it go just started. A, yeah, it just started a few years ago, um, so you know, it probably took a while to get going. But now that people know, and uh, Dan was commenting on a couple different things where games that he had seen there in previous auctions. Because uh-huh. this was the first one I've, I've been able to attend. And he also said that it was uh, the most attended one because they, they had numbers through uh, 75. Everyone got a program and with a number on the back, so when you bid, they can right. clearly see who's who. Yeah, it was really funny, actually. One of my uh, one of my completely unrelated Facebook friends posted a picture, or was uh, telling yeah. a picture of him holding up his number for his auction, and you were in the background. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. I was, I, I just saw the the tag come through on Facebook, and I was like, "How is this happening?" Yeah, well, like, who is this there. guy? He <laughs> was floating right next to mine. Yeah, but uh, so did you get anything good? Uh, no, unfortunately, I, like I went in a little meekly, um, and uh, and also unfortunately because of uh, this one, they they give out the list of games, and none of them really like were ones that I actually had to had to have. Um, and there was one that I was looking at that I bid up, but at the same time, like just before that came up, I I, I did the bad thing because I tried to support my local game shop, but I pulled up the Amazon app and I looked up the game to see how much it goes for on Amazon. I'm like, well, on Amazon it goes for fifteen ninety seven, so I'll bid anything up to fifteen bucks. But once it goes past that, right? Um, and and someone kept outbidding me on that one and shot up to sixteen. I was like, all right, well that's done. Does he still? We talked about this on the podcast before. But so, so does he still do the thing where, like, when he's he'll describe the game until somebody bids on it? Well, uh, yeah, actually, most of the ones at this one, he described it for a little bit and then started the bidding. But some of them, a handful, maybe like five of them, for the hour that I was there, he uh-huh. was explaining them, and someone jumped in with a bid. And a couple of them, he just took off on and started doing the bidding. But some of them, the more 
uh, games that he thought could get more money and were more important. He did, like, cut them off and was like, oh, wait just a second, because i got to point this and this out, and then he started going. Gotcha. So, because I think he's getting feedback that that kind of screws over some people, and it's smart if you're a bidder to try and cut them off and get the bidding going, so that way people don't realize how cool the game might be. Yeah, I like when I was there, there was there were still some people who were kind of like, "I'm at an auction. This is fun. I'm gonna bid." Yeah, and just kind of drove the price up for no fucking reason. Well, even though they didn't really have any intention on getting the game, it felt like. Well, I mean, but it, they could have screwed themselves over and been stuck with the bid if oh yeah 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 if everyone else had stopped and and there were a couple different ones that were games that people just thought that uh, like Dan and I are looking at each other when the, the numbers are getting up into the twenties and it's like this game isn't worth that but right. but it was it was what they wanted and yeah. uh, and it was cool because they kept on bringing out chairs setting up more and more chairs and it was standing room only near the end people were in the back. Uh, standing up, and, and it, right. it was a lot of fun. And it was a cool, it's a cool way to keep the games moving, because otherwise, there's a lot of people, like me, that are too lazy to take their games and sell them on eBay, because then you got to go through all the packaging up and stuff, and e- going eBay through eBay. eBay's a hassle. Like, yeah. it, anymore, really. I, I always feel like I end up losing money somehow, because, like, they hit you with fees when the auction's over, then they hit you with fees for PayPal, and then, like, a month later, you get hit with a bunch of fees again. And it's like, oh. wait, I just paid these. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's not even a matter of those fees. Those fees are just fine. It's, I'm so lazy, I just don't want to package the thing up and take it to the post office. Right. And so if someone could come to my house, if there was a concierge eBay service where they come to my house and I just give it to them, and then they, they do it. Stuff on eBay store. Yeah. Now, I, I think they <laughs> used to do that, like UPS stores, back when eBay was, like, huge. I, 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 want, I, I would like to buy these boots. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you, you can't buy them here. <laughs> I don't. I don't understand. <laughs> I have to. I have to look in to see if there's anything similar to like a, a used game auction or something around here. There's a couple like special day game stores in New York, but uh, I'm there's a bunch of games that I've played and like, but I don't really own any. I have one friend who just like buys everything and hosts yeah, game day and stuff. <laughs> I but have I, two friends like that. <laughs> yeah, I have one friend like that. So I, you know, whatever he has that's new, that's what we play. Yeah. I don't have enough people come over to my place regularly to invest the. 30, 40 bucks that some of the games are. Yeah, they can get pricey pretty quick, especially depending on yeah. how many components they have. Yeah. yeah. So something yeah. like that, like used and, and shareable and more yeah. community driven would be good. Right. Yeah, and it's awesome because it keeps the games out there. And Even though the original developers don't get any money out of it, it at least gets people to play their game. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, uh, Dan, I, on on another form of competition, not trying to bid each other out, uh, yeah. you, uh, you entered your first competitive pinball tournament? I, I did. Uh, so like I said, we have a, a pinball machine in my job. I started right. this job in April, and since then have like just fallen so far into a love affair with pinball. Uh, it's it's that, the best that was thing. that was absent before, or just not stoked properly. It just it just. I mean, I was aware that pinball existed. <laughs> I really wasn't aware that there was like a a game to it of like, okay. Mm. If you, do this and this order. Yeah, like a story almost. Yeah, yeah like, exactly. Like you're supposed to, like you have a goal on a pinball table. Exactly. It's not just flippers and hitting yeah. the ball and whatever. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know this. Yeah, the Pinball Arcade app told me that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Seriously, that's where I learned. I was like, oh, wait, you're supposed to actually do something in an order? <laughs> like, oh, yeah, and it's just like every game, it's just like any video game. Like, every game is different. It has different objectives, and it's so just because you're good at one pinball doesn't mean you're good at the other, and uh, I found this out. Right. Uh, so it also happens that my neighborhood where I live in Brooklyn is like ground zero for this pinball renaissance. There's like, I think, almost 20 tables within four blocks. Like every bar just has pinball. But they're there. all like the ones from the 1930s that are really, you know, very simple and all that stuff. Just, you know, it fits in with the Brooklyn vibe, right? <laughs> Extra pinball? No, is that what you're calling it? Probably, that's probably the oldest they get is probably like 80s. Okay. Uh, Early 90s, or like early 90s, and then some recent stuff. Um, but there's all sorts of tables all over. So one of the the bars down the street from me had a had a tournament on Sunday. Uh, it was four different tables. It was uh, Fun House, Scared Stiff, No Fear, and Lord of the Rings. Okay. And it was Funhouse a match really style. Table. Yeah, that was the one I did the best at. I actually have the there's a 3DS game I have that has a bunch of Williams pinball tables on it. And that's yeah, one okay. of them. So I sort of knew the the rules and everything to that one. Um, but basically, they there were there were only eight guys that showed up to play. So they broke us into two groups of four. We each played each of the four tables. Um, 
how you placed on that table, you won X number of points. So whoever got first place gets three points, second place two, third place one, fourth place zero. Um, score didn't matter going into that. Then once you play all four tables, they sort of added up your total and, uh, you know, decided who won out of there. So they actually did everything twice. After the first round, they split it into, okay, the top four and the bottom four guys, and then did it again. Right. Um, and basically just split, it was like a $5 entry fee and just split that between the, the top two winners of each That's one. That's not bad. Um, it would be close to impossible to do worse than <laughs> I did. Uh, did you place eighth out of eight? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. All like, right, not all right. even close. So was, uh, this, uh, was this Sunday when you tweeted at Taylor Swift yep. that you had just lost a pinball and she had won so an this award? Was, yeah, this is, so <laughs> not a half mile down the street, the VMAs were happening. Right. Uh, so there's the, the VMAs, and then about halfway between there and pinball is where I live. Okay. And I didn't want to be anywhere near that mess of traffic and people. Right. Uh, Probably pinball is probably. The, the does it really cause that much? Because like, would it be any? Would it be? Would it be any more? Uh, I don't know. Any more traffic than like a normal like Nets game that's sold out? Yeah, but they don't shut down the street. They don't have a red carpet. Oh, all right, all right. For right. the Nets that game. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Because like, but, you know, uh, it's got to be a pretty hard ticket to get. <laughs> I imagine. To the VMAs. Yeah. Yeah, there there was like a lottery. I think they were all free, but it was just a lottery. Right. Uh, and I think, like, the younger you were, the better chance you had. Oh, I'm sure. Them. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, somebody my age, Jesus Christ, I wouldn't even know what the fuck was going on on stage. Yeah. Uh, I didn't, from what I saw on Twitter and stuff, I didn't know a lot either. But And I, I'm I'm a little bit more tuned in than some of my, my contemporaries, too, and I still feel like I would have absolutely no idea what the hell's going on. <laughs> you weren't outraged by Miley Cyrus's performance? I didn't give a shit. We're not going to talk about it. I, like, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I it. There's nothing to talk about, so... Yeah. All right. But, uh, anyway, but yeah, so I, I, you know, after a few months of like having this pinball obsession, I finally put it to the test and got my ass kicked. But it was fun. I had a good yeah. time. Uh, Competition's yeah. good. You don't know how well you're going to do until you. Yeah, enter. exactly. And it was yeah. it was a combination of the the other guys I was playing with were were good. Uh, right. And I just had really bad luck. Like that aside. Like you know, there were on a couple tables where I basically what's called a house ball. Like you plunge right. it. And you don't even get a chance to hit it. Like it bounces around and goes right in the. Oh alley. yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. you're done. Like. Sometimes uh, it just happens that way. Yeah. Well, ha- have, yeah. <laughs> have you played the pinball? Times. Yeah. Have you played the pinball arcade app on iOS? Yep. Dude, that 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 thing's the fucking. That's awesome. Yep, I have that. I have so that's uh so aside from the you know being lucky enough to live in New York where there's still a lot of physical tables around right. that I can go play. Um, the the pinball arcade app is a is. Uh, seen a lot of action on my iOS device. Oh yeah. Um, Zen Pinball for the Wii U and for 3DS. I've been playing a lot of those. Yeah, 3 and yeah. 360 as well. Yeah, it's it's all over the place. Oh, yeah. I really like the I have the Marvel tables that they yeah. have, uh, which are a lot of fun. I love that there are like online leaderboards and stuff for that. So. Right. Um, different, but still a pinball experience. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Actually, I was I was supposed to go meet up with Dan on Saturday at the uh, Silver Ball Museum yeah. in Asbury Park, New Jersey, and it, it didn't work out schedule-wise, but I've been there before, and that place is awesome. Now, that place, if you're looking for vintage pinball from the 30s, oh, yeah, with yeah. no lights, <laughs> they'll have it. Like They have everything. Yeah, like you, you get a uh, table from like 1980 in there, and they're like, what the hell is this new confounded device? You know, yeah. <laughs> They have like no idea what the hell's going on It's probably like 70% the 60s and before. Yeah. Wow. And then a, a, a small fraction of it is, is newer stuff. But, there's but it's a good deal. It's like 20 there. bucks all day. Okay. And that's the thing was like, I sort of, I, was left, I was like, well, I can still go. But like if I'm going to make that, it's like a two-hour trip from New York. It's, you know, 15 bucks for the train there and back. It's $50 for the day to go play pinball. It's like if I want to go, like I'm going to go all day. Oh, yeah. You're going to make your money for Like I'm not going to go down there for a few hours. Like it's too much of a hassle. But yeah. Oh, well, it's a shame we didn't get to meet up. I heard it was a, a good time. I didn't get a chance to go either. We had a full day of social events on my calendar, which seems to happen more and more all the time. It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> um, Having to see people. Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it's okay, but when you have weekend after weekend of that, of just being so fucking popular, your friends want to see you. God. <laughs> I just realized... <laughs> Pretty soon. Yeah, anyway. Uh... So, um, not too...
thing that I was doing, but uh, I uh, I finally took the time to get a bunch of wires and the proper like things to make it look nice on the side and run shit from the back of my desktop in the basement up to the TV in my living room so that I could use like Steam's big picture mode and play some some PC games with a controller up on my couch where it's a lot more comfortable than at my desk where I'm sitting now in the basement. Um, and uh, I, I, I ran uh, two USB extenders, uh, two network cables, uh, an HDMI, and a coax digital audio up to the uh, up to the living room. And I got all this stuff came from monoprice.com, which if you're shopping for cables or things like that, it's absolutely the only place you should go. Um, and then I, I ran all this stuff into the wall and then I punched a hole in the wall and I had a, like, basically a modular, what's called a keystone jack outlet. So I could, like, has, like, six jacks per, like, what would be the size of what's called a, a one gang, but it's, like, a gang is, like, the size of, like, one power outlet, right? You guys follow me so far? Yeah, okay. uh, gang. Right. Okay. So I had a two gang thing, so I had basically, like, like 12 square holes to work with to, like, put, like, one network cable in or one HDMI port, things like that. So it looks all nice and everything in the wall, so it's, it's you know, I hate this term, but, like, wife-friendly, you know. So <laughs> there's not just wa- wires coming out of the floor or the wall out of a, a hole. And, uh, yeah, no, it, it, it works pretty well. So um, I, I uh, basically have a wireless keyboard, a wireless mouse plugged into the, two of the USB ports, and uh, everything else. I just have, like, a separate preset for my video card where I can just double-click it, and it switches the monitors from my dual monitor setup that I have normally at the, at the desk to just the TV, and it, like, automatically changes the resolution and all that stuff. Cool. The, um, the wireless keyboard and mouse, they work all the, from all the way upstairs down to your basement? No, no, no. It's a separate... The receiver's upstairs. Oh, okay. So if you turn those on, it would also operate the computer at the same time as my regular one is, is plugged in. All right. And gotcha. vice versa. So it's just a matter of which one you're moving, which I'm never moving the one downstairs when I'm upstairs and yada, yada. So I uh, I basically uh, messed around with that, and I, I took the advantage of, uh, of that to buy Saints Row 4 mm-hmm. on Steam, and I started playing that. Um... Uh, Dan, I, I know Adam, you're not familiar with the Saints Row series, but Dan, did you play three or any of them? Um, I played the majority of one and two uh-huh. about a year and a half ago. Oh wow! I bought like the double pack for next to nothing. I think like on a GameFly sale. Right. Um, the first one is a very not so great GTA ripoff, just straightforward. Okay. Two is where it starts getting silly and crazy. And yeah. I had a lot of fun with. I have three. I also bought that really cheap. I have yet to play it though. Okay, you should definitely before even thinking about playing four, you should definitely play three. Oh it yeah, I, picks I up exactly where three left off. Around to it. Not exactly, yeah. but I remember when it came out, you guys raving about it. And, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm about three or four hours into four. I guess about ten. I have like a ten percent completion rate right now, but it's it's fucking nuts. Like Is this the whole the one just, that takes a more comedic look at the game. Well, the the third one started with that. Saints Row the third. Uh, started the the just balls to the wall, you know the design docs probably just said fuck it, <laughs> and that's kind of how they went. Um, so the four takes that and sorts starts to amp up the crazy, starting directly with the story, like the the entire premise for everything. The fir- the, the events of the, of the game that happened in the first like two hours, it's just like oh all right, so they they did that, and it has the best popular music cue ever to ever appear in a game, period. I don't, I don't, I'm, this is a question, but I don't think a spoiler. It, there's like aliens and or superpowers in this game? Uh-huh. Okay. Yep. Yep. And it all works. It all makes yep. sense. <laughs> it, it, it completely fits in the world that they've created <laughs> and expanded on. Uh, even, even from uh, just Saints Row 2, like I played most of Saints Row 2, um, but I still feel like that's, you know, like what what GTA should have been. Oh, uh, that's what I. That's why I always said. That's why I was always a big fan right from the get go uh, with this series. Is that it? It always felt like a more fun version of GTA. Because Vice, I played all the Grand Theft Autos on the PlayStation Two, um, and Vice City and San Andreas were very like didn't take themselves too seriously. Right. Still got to do fun things, run around in that sandbox, and like 
and then GTA 4 was so serious. Personally, and controlled to me, like shit. It was not so fun disappointing. Play. Yeah, I was so disappointed in that game. Uh, and and Saints Row is sort of like, you know, where where they were going or what it should have been. Is it yeah, still if, fun they, if, if, if the two franchises were starting to intermingle and cross the streams, Saints Row took a left and GTA took a right. Yep. And Saints Row peeled out, you know, their their car way, transformed way, way into a robot, and they took Whoa. off into the sky, like you know. <laughs> cool. Yeah, so that that's kind of the idea of where of where they all went. Um, but I definitely I know we're gonna revisit this when when you know some other other fans of the series get back on this show and uh and we talk about it some more as we get further into the game. So I don't want to spoil that too much, but I am I am playing that right now. Um. And uh, Adam, let's get back to you. And yes. uh, I believe uh, your next, the other thing on the list is a Kickstarter game. Yes, it was a Kickstarter game called Dungeon Roll. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dan actually is the one that kickstarted it for uh, Perpetual Geek. Right. But l- luckily, we were all able to enjoy the. Um, our, uh, Daniel, are you familiar with Dungeons and Dragons? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wait, yeah. There, yes, there, there is a thing stuff. called Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, I have, I have, have, you ever I have dabbled in the D and D. Okay. All right. Well, I, I didn't know for sure. Oh, so. he knows the acronym too. Yeah. <laughs> um. But the the cool one of the cooler parts of being part of the Kickstarter and not just getting the game through regular means is that you get a nifty. Uh, it, they all come in a treasure box, but this one actually is the mimic treasure box that has the little mouth on the side, and okay. and will try and eat your fingers later on when you're going in for treasure. But the, uh, the game is really simple. It's uh, um, up to four players, I think. And you uh, basically you're rolling some white dice at the beginning, and they represent your adventurers that you're going down into a dungeon to try and kill monsters with. And then the player next to you rolls a bunch of black dice that have different monsters and some different uh, potions and treasures on them. And you use your... Um, your heroes to go through and slay the monsters. And certain heroes are better at slaying certain types of monsters. So you have your fighter types, which are uh, better to slay uh, goblins with, and you have your cleric types that are better at slaying um, skeletons, and you have your wizards that are better at slaying purple oozes. And they make sure to make everything nice and simple, where they color code uh, which good guys are better at fighting which bad guys. So you just kind of have to match up colors. Um, to be able to see uh, what's the easiest to destroy. And each dungeon that you go into uh, has up to ten different levels. So there is a press-your-luck element to it, where at the beginning, for the first level that you go in, you get a fistful of dice and you get to roll them, and then and the uh, guy that's kind of playing the dungeon master, but of course they don't term it that because they'll get sued to hell, um, only rolls <laughs> one monster die. So you have seven good guys and one monster guy, and you only get to roll all your hero dice once at the beginning. And then you have to use them piecemeal as you go down deeper and deeper into the dungeon. And every time you go deeper into the dungeon, there's more and more bad guys. So it's like resource management of what's the best way to get rid of these uh, monsters that were just rolled, uh, saving monsters for the next time, uh, saving heroes for the next time of which monsters to kill. And the deeper you go into the dungeon, when you finally decide to leave the dungeon, if you leave of your own accord, you get experience points based on how deep into the dungeon you got. That's the victory condition, whoever has the most experience points, which makes sense. And um, But if you press your luck too far and you go a little bit too far and the, bed and the DM rolls too many monsters for you to be able to defeat, you're forced to flee the dungeon you don't get any experience points uh, from that one. Uh, so you're kind of screwed that way. And there's also a cool mechanic where there's not just monsters, but somewhere in that dungeon there's a dragon, which makes sense, given the name. Um, and if, uh, if when the uh, GM is rolling dice, if eventually three dragons appear, that means that you've woken up the dragon, and the dragon is going to come and kick your ass, and you need three different hero types to be able to defeat it. So you always have that in the back of your head, too. Or just one called Drogo. Who? If you wake the dragon and drew Oh, yeah, no. yeah. But you know, the dragon will just scratch him and he'll go, right? Sorry, I was calling back to, like, early Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, I, I don't remember use that. The term, use the term wake the dragon, and, you know, he Viserys always used to say, like, oh, you've woken the dragon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah. So, 
Well, I, I didn't anyway. read the books. I only watched the HBO thing. Yeah, so. that was that was really that was very much in the HBO show. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. I didn't do I, either, so no, uh, I can't remember. It's all right. Before. Yeah. Uh, but it, it seems to be a very fun game. Unfortunately, when we got to play it, we didn't get to finish uh, the game out because it's designed to be able to be played in three delves. Each player gets three chances at, at being heroes and going in. But it's a lot of fun. And when you uh, when you end up getting a treasure token and your thief can pick the lock on the tre- on the treasure die, uh, you, you get an nifty little uh, colors, colored token to be able to pick out of your mimic uh, treasure chest. And, and so it, it comes with really cool components, and you can use the treasures the next dungeon delve that you do, or at the end, if you have uh, treasures left, they're just experience points to pile on top of your total score. All right. And it, it was a nice, fun, light game. It's a really quick game, like designed to be like 15, 20 minutes, depending on how many players you got. And it was a lot of fun. So it was so. only 15 or 20 minutes, and you didn't get to finish it? Uh, yeah, unfortunately, because um, when, whenever we have game nights at our place, uh, we we always run the risk of uh, Liam uh, uh, yeah, interjecting yeah. himself. So uh, right. he had one of his bad nights sleeping. Uh, uh, that, that's my son for all, all this. Yeah, time. I was gonna say that, that's your young son and not like just your brother or something. Like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so hey, my forty-five year old brother just had a bad night sleeping, so we had to comfort yeah. him. Yeah, he came home <laughs> drunk, and we had to get him upstairs and cleaned up. <laughs> but, uh, but but yeah, it, it was a good time. It, it was fun, and I look forward to playing it again. All right, cool. I'll have to get in on that. Yeah. Uh, Dan, let's wrap up uh, what you've been doing and tell us about uh, Steam World Dig. The hell is this? Steam World Dig. Uh, I think the subtitle is a fistful of dirt. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, it is, uh, a 3DS eShop game. Uh, okay. You can download onto your 3DS. I think it's like eight or nine dollars. Um, and is a you're Metroidvania type uh, ex- exploration platformer uh, where you're the steampunk robot in the Wild West uh, with a pickaxe and you dig down into the dirt. Um, the gist of it is basically you're collecting treasure. There are gems and jewels hidden in the dirt. Um, along the way, you find entrances to caves, and the caves are more like a pre set up uh, platform game. Um, so not as much exploration, but more like a puzzle platformer that results in you getting a power up. Uh, okay. So you can get, um, end up getting like a, a steampunk, like a jump, like a rocket jump that uses water. Uh, so while you're digging, you find like little underground pools that you can refill your water. Um, the gems that you collect, you can take back to the surface and basically trade in for upgrades. So you can upgrade your pickaxe. Uh, you end up finding a drill. You can upgrade that. with other robots. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really good. Um, I played it. Uh, I finished it pretty much just the through what the story ends up being. Um, it was, I think, four and a half hours it took me. Okay. Um, another podcast I listened to, there was a guy that was talking about it. He said his playthrough was like more closer to seven or eight hours. Uh, so I guess it depends on how much exploration you actually do. Uh-huh. Um, but the thing about it is basically the, the entire map is just this dirt, and you're sort of one square at a time digging away and going through it. So you're sort of making the map. Um, now, in addition to going back to the surface to trade in these gems to, to get upgrades, um, you also have a, a lantern, which is on a, you only have so much oil for. Uh, so as you go down deeper, the lantern runs out. It gets really dark. You can keep going, but it's really dangerous because you can't see what you're, what you're digging into. Right. Um, so you keep going up and down and up and down. Um, you know, and eventually as you get farther, there are, like, shortcuts and tunnels that will jump you back. But um, but this going back and forth, like, you sort of have to keep in mind as you're digging down, okay, I know I have to go back up. I should make a pretty easy path to follow. Or, like, you don't want to dig a straight line down. Right. Because once you go back to the top and you come down, you're just going to fall down this hole and hit it. So you sort of have to meander your way through. Right. Um, this this so sounds it, yeah. uh, structurally sort of like Terraria. Which was like that 2D version of Minecraft. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just vaguely familiar with that, but right. similar. I think it had, yeah, the similar like you're digging and sort of building your own thing and yeah, yeah. yeah. Huh. yeah that's easy. Yeah, it's, but, it's uh, got this cool, like steampunk robot vibe to it. Right. Uh, and a little bit of a story built in, and yeah, it's it's good. I really liked it. So it was a uh, eShop. How much was it? How much are we talking here for the I game? Think, I think it was like eight or nine dollars. Oh, that's not bad. No. 
Yeah. Uh, and that's actually for the for the eShop, that's actually one of the higher, like more premium things. That oh. isn't that isn't a retail release. Right. Uh, it's kind of yeah. like a like a mobile game. You see a mobile game that's five bucks. You're like, whoa, hey, hey, Mister yeah, Mister Fancy yeah. Pants, you know? Yeah, but on the on the eShop, that's pretty. I mean, that's pretty standard. Like, I don't mind paying three or four or five dollars for something. And right. I think most of the virtual console stuff on there is is around like four or five bucks. Okay. But uh, yeah, it's good. There's a lot of good stuff on 3DS eShop. I love that place. Yeah, I'll the. Yeah. I don't have anything that connects to that though. And yeah, well, oh, you, you need a 3DS. Yeah, yeah. that's. Uh, I don't. I don't know if the game's going elsewhere. I know it's on 3DS now, but I right. think that's it. So. Okay. Uh, yep. Interesting. All right. Well, uh, that's. Uh, we've kind of exhausted our what you've been doing stuff, so we're gonna head into the break. But uh, we have special music because um, tonight we have the artist, the creator of our break music uh, from Beta Club Field Trip, and the the track Super High Tech Jet Fighter. Uh, Mr. Daniel Lloyd, you are the man behind Beta Club Field Trip. That's me. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about Beta Club Field Trip and the track uh, Super High Tech Jet Fighter, and like how you create this. Uh, yeah, so Beta Club Field Trip is what you would call chiptune music. Uh-huh. Uh, it's basically original music used creating old video game hardware um, that, as a genre, can include other genres of music. There's, you can make jazzy sounding chiptunes or more uh, upbeat J pop stuff, or you, you name it. So basically, just using that as an instrument. Right. Uh, and that goes for video game hardware, consoles, Nintendos, Game Boys old Atari computers, Commodore 64s, you name it. Um, personally, I use the Nintendo Game Boy most of the time. Uh, sure. there's, a, a, <laughs> yep, there's a software for it called Little Sound DJ, um, which basically lets you manipulate the sounds that the Game Boy can make sort of in real time. Like, the, 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 like there's an inherent group of sounds that the Game Boy is hardwired to make, correct? Yeah. Yep. So basically, okay. uh, with the, the Sega Genesis as well, and older consoles, uh, I just know the Sega offhand, um, basically they, they can't sample music. Right. Um, so that's the C64, for example. Like Basically, it's just a working synthesizer in there that when you play a game with music in it, it's it's playing, you know, the code or whatever is playing on that synthesizer. Um, so basically what the, the LSDJ program does is lets you have access to that on your Game Boy Right, um, and sort of manipulate it and make it do whatever you want. Um, there's only four channels, uh, so if you think about like if you open GarageBand on your computer uh, nowadays and want to create a song, you can pick as many piano and okay, I need a guitar sound and I need a drum sound and just add as many layers of stuff as you want. On the Game Boy, there are only four. <coughs> Sorry. That's okay. And, uh, so there are only four. You have two square waves, which are more of like a synthesizer sound. <coughs> oh, the, man. Uh, <laughs> the triangle wave, which is more of like a bass sound. Yeah. And the noise, which is like a static you can sort of use for drums. Right. Um, so it's, it's very limited. And then for me, the fun of that is sort of, okay, like with only this much potential, like what's the most you can do with it? Yeah, that's sort of like uh, it reminds me of um, when the Beach Boys were first starting and they only had like four track uh recorders to work with back in the 60s, one of the things that Brian Wilson came up with was like, all right, well, let's do all these vocal harmonies and separate tracks. I'm going to mix that down, and then I'm going to put that mix down on the one track in a new recording. So yeah. can you kind of do things like that? You, you can. I mean, obviously, recording on modern stuff, you know, you can, can do this and record it and then make something else and record and you know, add it together. Um, it does support the leak cable. So if you have two Game Boys and two copies of this software... You basically have eight tracks now. Oh, there you go. Um, you can link together. You can slave one so that you know it. That's in control. Um, but uh, but yeah, I I mostly just use one one Game Boy, four channels. Uh, the song that you're gonna hear is one Game Boy, four channels. Okay. And you can uh, find that at uh, BetaClubFieldTrip.BandCamp.com. That's right. Uh, there's plenty of music up there. It's all free. Okay. So have at it. But you're also welcome to pay whatever you want for if it you as want. well. Yeah. There's some. Uh, you. You've covered some Taylor Swift songs, which people have uh, heard in our our previous podcast. So uh, enjoy this, and we'll see you on the side uh, when Adam and Dan fight out in five hit combo. Yeah. I'm gonna get some water. <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm going to go get rid of some water. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that too. And so whoever might be watching, we'll be right back. My mic was muted. Hi, Dan. Hey. You feeling better? Yeah, it's just all that all that talking at once. Yeah, it hit you all at once. I shouldn't have made you talk twice in a row. No, that's all right. Just kind of worked out that way. Oh, man. <clears throat> So uh, did you start feeling bad today or kind of head cold sort of stuff? Oh, it was or? like a week ago, yeah. Um, I saw it last Tuesday and Wednesday, I just stayed home and played games, and <laughs> I felt awful. Uh, I did yeah. some work from home, but no, I, I feel fine. I'm just still sniffly. I just want that part will right. go away. So. so what do uh, I, I know you don't necessarily want to name your, your company that you work for, but uh, what, what do you actually do um, for them? I was going to say I'd tell you, but we're on the live on the internet. I don't think it really matters. I don't care. Um, so I work for a GroupMe. You know right. the GroupMe app? Yes. Yep. Uh, so they I saved their ass during packs. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's good stuff. Um, they were sold to Skype about two years ago. Right. Uh, Microsoft has bought Skype, so we're this weird, we have this weird like satellite relationship yeah. with Microsoft that we get a lot of their money, but we have to play by their rules, but they're never here, and they don't understand... <laughs> it's uh, we have this weird relationship with them, but uh, I do support user support, uh, a little bit of like QA. So any emails that come in, people that have problems with the app goes to me. Okay. Uh, and then if you, you know we're sort of the first line of first ones to know, like once we put out a new release, what did we break? You know, like we did right. QA testing and all this, but so we put something out and we see, oh, all these users have the same problem. We'll let the engineers know and let okay. the developers know and. Do you schedule your vacation days on those days when there's going to be a release? <laughs> we we release pretty often, but it's uh, we just did a, a big one for Windows Phone uh, that brought our new like custom emoji to it that didn't go so hot. So we're <laughs> we're working on that really hard right now, but uh, it's been uh, busy. <laughs> Just before we get going again, I just want you to know that I had no idea what the break music was going to be when I made my crack earlier that we don't need no break music. Oh, I, I, <laughs> oh that's fine. <laughs> so, sorry. <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> Ooh, and I got one more thing. It, I'm going to push a button here and talk into the mic, and I want to know if you guys hear me. Okay. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yep. Well, that's weird. 
I guess it's kind of <laughs> good because I'm not going to the recording right now, but you guys can still hear me. All right. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Yep. Sure. All right. You guys ready to come back? Yes. Yep. I have notes. My worst five hit combo ever. I am ready. <laughs> Daniel's streak of uh, going to be the I, only I guys are, one is well this topic all seem very like broad. I, I don't yeah, know. we've we've been what hitting some like of the bottom of the barrel or what? Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm I'm going to try and delve into that list. Uh, Dan sent me the link for it. I'm going to try and add to it. Yeah, send that to me too. I'll I'll see what I can do. You know, I completely forgot to keep doing that post I was going to do where we all chime in on five hit combo. I yeah, yeah. about that. It's all your fault that it's falling apart. Yeah, it really is. Well, it is solely my fault. It was my idea, and I was the one that was going to execute it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, during the earlier segment, there was a lot of, like, scratching. It sounded like someone, like, moving paper or something that I could hear in my headphones. So, uh, And I know it wasn't yeah. me. Yeah, I, might, I, my, I just have the mic on my headphones, like I said, maybe. Oh, okay. Maybe that, if I, like, turned or whatever, I picked it up. Uh, Do you have headphones like that to have the mic on it? Yeah. Well, like, like yeah. cell phone ish headphones, right? Yeah, they work. Yeah. It has like the remote and stuff that works like an yeah, iPhone. And... Cool. Oh, cool. Yeah. Sorry. Ready? It's alright. Oh. Ready. Welcome back. Uh, we're going to, of course, as we usually do, go right into 5 hit combo. And uh, like I said, tonight, at the top of the show, tonight our topic is the uh, top five would be titles for my autobiography. And. Uh, I, I'm I'm very curious to hear your answers on this tonight, gentlemen. But before uh, well, we get... once again, it's mine, like mine, not yours. Yeah, it's not it's not Kevin's autobiography. Okay. It is your own autobiography. So I hope you both did your list on on yeah. that. And otherwise, I, I learned really well. Yeah, and uh, to explain what five hit combo is, uh, here is our friend uh, Jonathan Mitchell. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to five hit combo. Brought to you by Perpetual Geek Machine. I would like to remind the audience that 5-Hit Combo is a friendly competition in which two players will read back their top five lists of a given topic in a 5-4-3-2-1 style, while a third player judges the list based on his or her own personal tastes. And remember, listeners, the players may change every week, but the game is perpetual. And without further ado... Let's get ready to podcast! God damn, he put so much work into that. Yeah, Shout out looking. to uh, Jonathan Mitchell, who got me an awesome RoboCop t-shirt yesterday. Oh, nice. Yeah. I still have never seen RoboCop. What? What? <laughs> I've never seen it. The I, more movies you say that to, the more I don't know we can be friends. I yeah. hate Paul Verhoeven. That man but, has never uh, made a good movie. Okay. Yes, he he never. Made, it's called RoboCop. Well, th- don't get me wrong. This isn't a good movie, but it's a good movie. Do you know, have you seen Total Recall? Yeah, I saw Total Recall a long time ago. The yeah, the original? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no. yeah a long time ago. I, I, yeah, a long time ago. I, I didn't see the Colin Farrell one a long time ago. I saw the Arnold Schwarzenegger one a long time ago. <laughs> you need to see RoboCop. I think it's on Netflix. Uh, that's what I keep hearing. I just I, I would really have to get myself like in a group of people who are basically putting it on against my will to watch it. All right. <laughs> done and done. Yeah. Next game night is RoboCop night. All right, gentlemen. Nice. I'm going to uh, start to sh- start the, 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 the jam here. So uh, my coin is up in the air, and uh, Mr. Sickface, you're the one calling it. So uh, what, do you, what do you call? Uh, Tails. Tails. It is Tails. Oh, yeah. Weird. Uh, would yeah. you like to go first or second? I'll go first. We're back to this shit again. All right. Awesome. <laughs> what do you mean, this shit? But the flip in the coin. Motherfucker, I this this, this fucking tradition that I will carry on to my death. All right. If I think it was cemented from the, t- the time that someone actually flipped a real coin and it was tails. But after that, it was like, okay, we can never, we can never change it. <laughs> it just kind of is a thing. Uh, all right. So, uh, Dan, what is your number five? Would be number five list for my autobiography is who cares. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> that's, I, don't, I don't even know what, what to explain with that. I was like, yeah, this, this is what this is me. That's what happened. You can read it if you want. Who gives a shit? <laughs> uh, I feel like that's kind of what all autobiographies should be for the most part. Like, I don't know. If you if you are egotistic enough to think that you should write an autobiography because your life has been so fucking good, 
Yeah. <laughs> All right. Simple and to the point. I like it. Adam, yeah, you're number five. Well, I went about this. All the original ones I started thinking of were along the lines of Daniel's number five because uh, they were all self-deprecating and terrible, and I put myself down in a hole mentally, and I was like, oh, this is terrible. So I went about thinking about it a different way that something from this point on I'm going to do and fall ass backwards into becoming famous in some way oh. so that people will actually want to uh, uh, read a book about me. And number five is the one where I'm actually friends with someone else that did something awesome. So <laughs> my number five is Coke Tales, How to Take the Long Ride Without Falling Off. Okay. Nice. So, what did your friend do that was awesome? Um, well, in this one, I'm assuming it's going to be my son is going to uh, find some kind of scientific discovery that's going to help uh, with, like, energy-wise. Okay. And, and, like, maybe get us off oil. All right. That's Although ambitious. I should, probably shouldn't have put that out on a podcast because now the oil consortium is going to hunt him down and kill him. Damn it. I'm sorry. Uh, we all know yeah. how famous scientists get. <laughs> yeah. so ride those coat tails. Oh, burn! Hey, who's Einstein? We know about him. Bravo. Who's Heisenberg? He made those compensators on Star Trek. We know about him. Heisenberg, he's a meth dealer. He's, he's in that Facebook movie, right? <laughs> you both said things I don't know anything about. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Dan, your number four title. Number four is uh, New Dork City, a memoir. <laughs> <laughs> I live in New York. I like nerdy stuff. It's it's low hanging fruit. Yeah, that's all right though. You know? Reminds <laughs> me of New Jack City. I can write about all the adventures I've had in New York. <laughs> all right, Adam, you're uh, you're number four. All right, my number four uh, harkens on something that I've recently been getting into, and and so somehow I'm getting an odd satisfaction out of it, one I would never would have expected. Something to do but with composting. It, it sure does. You knew it. <laughs> From trash to cash, how I made a fortune composting. <laughs> nice, nice. Because I, I don't know why, but I go out there and I turn that freaking compost pile, and it, it just watching steam raise all, and it's like, yeah. I'm like, I, I, I want to make some kind of a... A company that gets more people doing it and somehow make millions of dollars at it. It's not a bad thing. Yeah. All right. Uh, Dan, you're number three. Number three. So uh, you guys might know, but if you follow me anywhere on the internet, I sort of have the universal username of Lloyd Sold Out. Right. <laughs> uh, so that's the name of my autobiography is Lloyd Sold Out because everyone else has an autobiography now, right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. All right. So uh, th this is a good time to address this. What does your. Where it from? Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, because, you know, it, you haven't sold out of anything. It's not like you're rich and famous for anything. Uh, so I kind of, as I want to joke, whenever people ask us, tell them, no, it's it's Lloyd's old out. <laughs> uh, you're just all reading it wrong. But that's not true. Uh, so once upon a time, in the early 2000s, there was a thing called Live Journal. Uh, oh, wow. That was, yeah. This was before MySpace, before Facebook. That's what, when I was in high school, all the kids were doing. Uh, and I was a late adopter. So by the time I finally got around to getting a live journal, I called it Lloyd Sold Out and uh, finally got right. one. And it stuck, and I have that name everywhere now. So. There you go. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so Adam, do you have any particular? We're going to dive, like, divert a little bit here. Uh, uh -oh. Do you have a, a username you fall back on? Um, you have like fifteen different Twitter accounts. Uh, not anymore. I I did go through recently and purge most of them. And okay. and the the last one I made was solely because I didn't realized the power of Twitter lists and I made up one just to follow people that I was going to PAX to be able to watch. Right. But now that I got Twitter lists all figured out, I'm all squared away with that. Okay. Um, I, no, my... Uh, I'm trying to just go with my name now, but uh, my name is apparently popular enough that I just straight old Adam Dixon that I just threw my middle initial in there for Twitter. But okay. my generic fallback one is like Adam72, just the year I was born. And right. Nothing, nothing cool, unfortunately. How about you? Uh, well, mine, uh... Yeah, yours, you do have a... I, I fall back on Harpoon yeah, Scorpio. What, yeah, I don't have no idea what that is. I've been meaning right. to ask you for the longest so, time. There was a time in my life for a good lengthy period where I was a very big Fish fan. Uh, PH Fish, the hippie oh, wow. band. Uh, I was really into jam bands. I, I liked that whole scene. I was never what you would call a hippie in any stretch of the imagination. I just like their music. Um, yeah. And they had a song called Harpoo about a dog. It was a really long, drawn-out song, like most of their stuff. 
Uh, so I always liked that name, but that name is very frequently taken by Fish fans because it's a unique sort of name that they made up. Yeah. Uh, I am not super well-versed in The Simpsons, but I do have a favorite Simpsons character, and that is Hank uh, Scorpio. Yeah. Um, I, that is my favorite episode of The Simpsons, and I think he is hilarious, and that episode is amazing. Um, and so I just kind of combined the two, Harpo and Scorpio, and as it turns out, that is... 100% of the time available everywhere you go, and if it's not available, it's because I already took it and forgot about it. Yeah. <laughs> same same here. Yeah. yeah so cool. that is where Harpoa Scorpio comes from. Also, yeah. I hope no one goes and looks up that live journal. Uh, I need to figure out how to delete that. Yeah, now that you so. mention it, I might have to do that. <laughs> you, you have until Friday to delete it. Yeah, so. I, have a, I have a project tonight. <laughs> or of the, uh, whoever's watching spreads the word already. Yeah. All right, let's get back to Five at Combo. Uh, Adam, you're sure. number three. My number three is something I've been fighting to try and do my whole life. How I got fit, and you can too. How I finally got in shape. All right. Because I, I would think it would take something like one of those biggest loser shows to actually do it for me. So then I get a little bit of popularity and hopefully be able to capitalize on that. Gotcha. All right. So, uh, Dan, you're number three, or two. We're on two now. Number two. <laughs> uh, I am all for space travel and exploration. Go mm -hmm. for it, NASA. Good. Keep it up. Do I want to go to space? Nope. Uh, not ever. <laughs> Terrified. So my number two autobiography is, but I really am the last man on Earth. Everyone has gone to space, but I'm staying right here. <laughs> uh, so when you guys all go live on the moon, have fun. I don't want to go out there. <laughs> what, what, what drives your fear? What feeds your fear of space travel? Um, everything. Just yeah, like but if getting everyone on a rocket, else is going, getting on a rocket, pretty scary. Just going, oh, like going to space. I don't have any business out there. There is, <laughs> there is so much potential for things to go wrong in outer space. Uh, well, yeah, but there's a lot of potential for things to go wrong here too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I still got. A, there's a lot of Earth to see and things to do, and you guys have fun. I mean, I'm just I'll, really kind I'll of like, not to fort. put this, not to put this fear <laughs> in your head, but I'm really, am just kind of waiting for Manhattan just to kind of implode on itself. Yeah, you should. No, not with, not with Bloomberg, like uh, cleaning you know. everything up. No, I mean like yeah. structurally, like the island should oh, just no. sink into the Atlantic Ocean, yeah. is what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah, no, you're not gonna be able to on the giant I mean, what, How much Earth is left underneath the moon? It's all tunnels. That's what I'm saying. Everything. That's it's, yeah, like it's surrounded by water, and you dug all that fucking island out. Like <laughs> that thing, whole thing is gonna come crashing down at some point. Like There's a, a single low bearing piece of granite under the city yeah. somewhere, and it's <laughs> that, just gonna chip. One a day worm is point. getting ready to move as he snugs <laughs> by it, or one of those enormous <laughs> rats. Uh, all oh, right, uh, <laughs> Adam, you're number two. All right, my number two is space involved also, but uh, like Daniel, I would still be on Earth, but mine is uh, Close Encounter, the human that made first contact. I, I would be the one lucky human that the spaceship comes down and lands next to me, and the gangplank comes down, and alien dude comes out and starts talking to me for some reason. <laughs> but everyone, of course, would want to hear my story of what that was like. Of course. Uh, you guys have a lot of subtitles and long titles, so I'm gonna I'm jotting down the gist of them. You're gonna have to clarify them as I count them back. I feel no like problem. every every single book now that like nonfiction has a subtitle. Yeah, yeah, a lot, a lot of colons being used these days. Because they sound good yeah. when John Stewart says I'm on the Daily Show. So. <laughs> uh, Dan, you're number one. Number one, found, found, found. How I amassed a respectable video game collection for next to nothing. <laughs> that is a typical weekend Twitter post for you. Is like today's yep. yard sale find all this I've, for yep. three cents. <laughs> yep. I've been very lucky and uh, I I enjoy the hunt of the flea market and used bookstores and things like that. Yeah. And, uh, also, just lucky enough to one keep a lot of what I had growing up. And I was never into like reselling or trading in games to get other stuff for. Uh, and uh, just having friends that know that I like that stuff. Be like, oh, this is old. You can have it. Uh, I've gotten quite a few things from Dan Zuccarelli. Oh, yeah. He mailed me his C64, uh, which is probably in my home. But uh, <laughs> I always tell people, I was like, if you have the stuff and you want to get rid of it, I will take it from you. Right. Whenever I open the museum, uh, you know, Free the it. little plaque will be like a gift from the estate of. Uh, <laughs> and uh, nice. like, that's, that's, that's what you get out of it. Right. 
So. Uh, I uh, I was at a point when I was getting like by time I was done with something like my NES or whatever else, I had a nephew that was just old enough to inherit that. So a lot of my stuff passed to him for him to ruin. So oh. that's where a lot of my a lot of my stuff ended oh. up. Yeah. Oh. Do to do. Uh, <laughs> Adam, you're number one. All right, my number one is hopefully one day I'll be able to make it big at what I love doing, uh, Games Master. Hmm. Nice. Games uh, Master is a story of Adam Dixon and his yes. rise to power in the tabletop realm <laughs> dun, dun, dun. and social night weekly havings. There you go. I'll just add your subtitle for it. And, and that's a long colon. Yeah, here. <laughs> I, oh. <laughs> let me get all that. I got, hey! Hey! Let me, let me get out of that colon. <laughs> could use could use some more alliteration to uh, if you really want to sell things. But well, that, yeah. that was the first draft. We'll, we'll work yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, gentlemen. Nice list. I uh, I do appreciate them. Um, we had right. a uh, we have some judgment. We have some winners. Here. I mean, so, you're a figure. We don't have to vamp. I uh, know we don't have to vamp. We're All good right, to go. Cool. Uh, number five, Dan said, "Who cares?" <laughs> and uh, Adam said, "Coattails: How to take the long ride without falling off." And uh, I went with uh, Mr. Lloyd here because he is kind of right. That should be the title of almost every autobiography. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number four, Dan said, "New Dork City," and Adam said. From trash to cash. How I made a fortune composting. Oh, uh, there we go. And I went with that. From trash to cash. That's a, that's a pretty good title. I'm surprised there's not something called that already. Actually. <laughs> also, I'm I'm interested in learning how you would make money from composting. Like I would I would read that book. All right, I, all right. I will now work on it. So okay. in like 20 years, I'll make money and then and then be able to write the book. Cool. Chapter one: Throwing shit out. <laughs> Chapter one: Eat some fruit. Chapter yeah. two, <laughs> throw that shit in a pile. <laughs> chapter three, profit. <laughs> chapter three is a question mark, and then chapter four is profit. Oh, it was close. Yeah. All right, number three, Dan went with Lloyd sold out. And uh, number three, Dan, or Adam said, How I Got Fit and You Can Too. Was there an extra subtitle to that? Uh, um, maybe How I Finally Got in Shape. There you go, yeah. There we go. Uh, I went with Lloyd sold out. Because uh, if it's, it's as enticing as his live journal sounds, yeah. I am all in. <laughs> you just want me to stay fat, I know. No, I, I, I want you to uh, get as healthy as you choose to get, Adam. It's a disease. The, 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 live, in, the live journal entries will not be in the book. No? No. Oh, <laughs> they need to go away. All right, number two, Dan said, But I really am the last man on Earth. And Adam said, close encounter. The human that made first contact. Oh, there we go. Uh, I went with, uh, but I really am the last man on Earth. <laughs> like, writing that book for no one is hilarious to me. <laughs> <laughs> like, why bother? Barnes and Noble, and it's nothing but his book. Yeah, he just has to go and learn how to figure out the printing press and or how to upload it to Amazon, and then, yeah. Anyway, uh, so that, if you're keeping track, that gives Dan the win. Sorry, Adam. Uh, mm-hmm. well, but number fine. one, let's wrap this up. Uh, Dan said, found, found, found. And your subtitle, please. Was, uh, I mean, it's how I amassed a respectable video game collection for next to nothing. All right. And then number one, Adam said, Games Master. Because, uh, he, he, yeah, I don't know. Was there a subtitle to that? No, no, no subtitle. Just, oh, just okay. Games Master with me, with a picture of me looking real regal and yeah. awesome. Real yeah. masterful. I went with Games Master on that one. Woohoo! Yay! So I feel that, better about myself. Thank that you. puts a uh, three to two victory firmly in Dan Lloyd's uh, grasp there. So congratulations, two, Dan. Two and O oh and one. Yeah, there you go. Still undefeated. That's right. It's not nations. a setup. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I think that's we don't really have anything else to talk about, do we, gentlemen? Is that about uh, the size of it? Yeah, yeah that no, is about no. the size. Of it. Is that really a like a thing that only I say? I, I guess so. 
I don't know, yeah. I've had a few people point that out to me. Like that's about the size of it. <laughs> like, well, I thought that was a thing people say. I don't know. <laughs> it sounds like an old timey thing, uh, like a Walter Cronkite sign off. <laughs> my my mother instilled all these fucking like crazy things that she says. I, uh, you know, and my my wife loves making fun of like she says things like asparagus wrong. She says asparagus. Oh. And uh. Her. Yeah. Like not ornery, but ornery, things like that. So it's, well, that it's one's close. I, no, I it, it's pretty close. But still, there's a lot of other ones I can't think of right now. I don't really want to shit on my mother too much. But uh, <laughs> yeah, you you berate her cooking uh, last week. I did do that because she's a terrible cook, and she'll never listen to this. Oh, um, yeah. It would be sad <laughs> if someone delivered her the podcast and headphones to listen to it on. Yeah, she wouldn't even know what the hell to do. She wouldn't even recognize it as me. But anyway, you can, <laughs> you can, we don't have any community uh, feedback this week, but you can always contact us with any questions, suggestions, or comments via email at uh, podcast at perpetualgeekmachine.net is our email address. Uh, we're on Twitter and Facebook, so it's uh, each one of those dot com slash perpetualgeek, uh, YouTube dot com slash perpetualgeekmachine, which I am going to be uh, getting all of these archives up there in a more timely fashion. I just kind of forget each week a lot of times. Uh, you can uh, find us on Tumblr if you're into that. It's perpetualgeekmachine.tumblr.com. And on uh, Google Plus, if that's your thing, uh, gplus.to slash PGM show. Oh, so uh, gplus2 slash PGM show. What, what um, about Live Journal? Live Journal, no Live Journal for here, but we do have a phone number. That's uh, 856 282 0042. And uh, that's all the places you can contact us and get a hold of us. So go ahead and do that. Since I run, th- I bother to run through them every week, and you bother to listen, so you might as well bother to contact us and say hello. Yeah. So uh, for Adam Dixon and Daniel Lloyd, I've been your host, Kevin Alexander. Uh, thank you for listening, and until next time, we are shutting down the machine. <laughs>